guys, welcome back to the homestead. I'm Michelle. Today we are making a simple recipe and we're going to be canning some pears. It doesn't matter what kind of pears you use for this recipe, just as long as they're fairly ripe. Uh, you don't want them overly ripe, um, but you want them fairly firm. And you know, with food prices skyrocketing the way they are going, and they're only going to go up even more here in Alaska, which they already are. Um, anytime I can pick up some things at the supermarket, uh, when they're a fairly good price, I go ahead and pick them up and I get them put in the pantry. Um, because I can't grow pears in our garden area here in Alaska because it's way too cold. So I'm going to get these pears cut up and then I'm going to get my jars ready. And we are going to need about three pounds of pears. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill my bowl up with water. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I've got the seed out of this. And I've already got my absorbic acid in the water here. And that's just going to prevent our fruit from turning brown. I put about a half a teaspoon in maybe about a gallon of water. So we're going to go ahead and get these cut up. So now I'm going to go ahead and wash my jars. Anytime you're canning, make sure that you check these rims to make sure there's no little chips in there because occasionally you will get a chip or just a hairline crack. Okay, so I've got my three quart jars. I've got my three quart jars in here. And I'm just really sterilizing them well, and they're going to stay in here till we get ready to use them. And now we're going to start making the brine. Our brine mixture, we're going to need four cups of water. And I'm going to put this on medium heat and get it boiling. <clears throat> so we're going to set this aside. And we are going to add three cinnamon sticks to our brine mixture. A couple slices of ginger here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut this down a little bit. Now we're also going to need a handful of cloves and we're going to add this to our brine mixture. So we're also going to need three cups of brown sugar.
And there's three. Now we're just going to turn this up a little bit. Going to turn it up to a little past medium heat. We're just going to bring this to a boil. All right, so our brine is getting hot and we're going to go ahead and get our lid lids ready. Get them sterilized. I think that's good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and rinse our pears. Okay, so I'm gonna put this uh, brine mixture in a bigger pot because I am making more than normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to a bigger pot. All right, so we got that nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and add our vinegar. So we're going to add four cups of vinegar to this. Alright, so that's nice and hot. Our brine is nice and hot. We're going to go ahead and add our pears. All right, and we're gonna cook these pears until they become just slightly transparent. Okay, the pears have been going for a few minutes.
I'm going to add a little bit more juice. So we need about a half an inch head space. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set the timer for 20 minutes. And we'll see you back in 20 minutes. It's been a few hours since we took them out of the canner. Um, and they are completely cooled. And I'm going to go ahead and remove these rings just to make sure that all my seals have sealed. Occasionally, you will have food particles that will get underneath the seal and prevent it from sealing properly. That's why you want to remove your rings. And another reason, if you do not check your jars really well and there could be a little nick, 
that will keep it from sealing. So you always want to remove your rings and make sure there is that little indentation in the lid. And sometimes you'll hear that little ting as it seals or after 24 hours another way you could check to make sure that it is vacuum sealed properly you can go ahead and tip this upside down and you can see it's completely sealed and this is the way that you want to store your jars in your nice cool cellar now i did make more than i normally do so i have a jar that I did not process that we will eat soon and anytime that you are doing a water bath canner make sure that you have some type of canning uh, rack in the bottom because you do not want to put your jars directly into the canning water bath uh, because they do have a tendency to flop around and that will crack your jars. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys will be doing some canning and gardening as well. So give it a try and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like our channel. Bye now.